1 John chapter 3 verses 4. 1 John chapter 3 verses 4. It says, Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practice lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. Which means every sin is breaking the commandment of God. And we, you all know that breaking the commandment of God is sin. And breaking the biggest commandment of God will be the biggest sin. Can you agree with this logic? I believe you all will agree. And if breaking the commandment of God is sin, and breaking the biggest commandment of God is the biggest sin, we should know what is the biggest commandment of God. I will read that also from Bible. That is from Matthew chapter 22 verses 37. And Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. Dear friends, the greatest and the biggest commandment of the Bible is that we should love our God with all our heart, mind, and soul. My question, do you really love your God? If I ask you, all of you will say that you love your God. But I personally know, I began to love my God only 20 years before. But I am alive on earth more than 40 years. And all these times, uh, I used to believe in God. And I know you also believe in God. If I ask you, do you believe God? You, you can say that I believe in God. But my question, do you love God? Uh, you know, love and belief is different. You know what's the difference between love and belief? Belief is always very selfish. I believe in Jesus. I worship Jesus. I thank Jesus. I adore Jesus that he will heal my backache. That he will give me a good job. That he will bless my husband. He will bless my wife. You know, this is always when you believe, you want Jesus to do something good for you. But when you love, your focus is always Jesus. What can I do for Jesus? How can I please him? How can I love him? You know, love, love is that, you know, once one saint prayed, Jesus, if I love you for the sake of heaven, put me in hell. Because I don't want to love you for the sake of heaven or hell. I love you because I love you. And you have created me to love you. So love is different from faith. So I know that you all believe in God and you all have faith in God and you all worship God, you all thank God. But my question, do you love God? Let us fall in love with Jesus. You know, one, see, imagine that I have a girlfriend. Suppose if I have a girlfriend whom I really love, 24 hours she will be in my monitor. You know, when, you, when I am getting up, my thinking will be about that girlfriend. When I am meeting, I will think about her. When I am traveling, I will think about her. 24 hours, I will keep on thinking about her. So if you fall in love with Jesus, 24 hours you also will think about Jesus. And one more thing. Suppose if I have a real loving girlfriend, and if I get one hour to spend with her, I will be keep on talking to her, asking what kind of churidar you like, white, green, yellow, you know, what kind of food you like, uh, noodles, fried rice, mixed fried rice, you know, uh, chicken, mutton, beef, you know, I will be keep on talking uh, and she will be keep on listening, but she doesn't know what she heard and I don't know what I, heard, what I spoke. You know, if you really fall in love with someone, 24 hours you will try to speak to that someone. The same way, if you fall in love with Jesus, you will be speaking to Jesus 24-7. Always your thinking will be, how can I please my Jesus? And you will be thinking and talking to him. See, when I am sitting in this boat, you know, I, I, I'll say, thank you, Jesus, for this boat. Thank you, Jesus, for this nature. Thank you, Jesus, for this climate. You know, for everything, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That is the person who fall in love with Jesus. And one more thing I want to tell you, my friends. This is one of my experience. Um, one day, one of my friends invited me for an evangelization meeting in his prayer meeting. He's a medical doctor. So when I went to his house, he was sitting in his clinic treating a patient. So I saw an empty chair at his right side. So I thought, why can't I sit in that chair? So I went and sat in that chair. Then he gave me one pinch. And he did not allow me to sit there. So I asked him, why you did? Why you pinched me? Why you did not allow me to sit there? You know what was his answer? After my charismatic retreat, I did not come all alone. I came with my Jesus. So I have given this chair for Jesus to sit. So this is not the seat for anyone. This is for my loving Jesus to sit. I asked him, why you want to keep Jesus in your clinic? You know what was his answer? Before I brought Jesus to this clinic, 
I used to say lie to the patients and try to earn money. But now Jesus is sitting and looking at me and listening to my communication with my patients, so I cannot say lie. So I asked him, when you go out of the clinic, what you will do? He said, I will take Jesus and go. And I asked him, when you travel in the car, what you will do? He said, I will ask Jesus to sit in my car and I will sit in his lap. And then he drives. So then I asked, when you go to sleep, how you sleep? He said, I will go and sleep in the lap of Jesus at night. And I said, when you get up in the morning, what you will say? He said, I will say, good morning, Jesus. And I was so happy. And you know what he said? When my wife gave me a cup of coffee, I will say, Jesus, thank you for this cup and thank you for the water. Thank you for this tea powder. And especially thank you for the tea plantations of my country and from different countries where people are working. And if I get a soap, I will thank for the company of that soap and for the people who work behind the soap. You know, for everything, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. It was an eye-opening for me. I also thought, why can't I also fall in love with Jesus and say, thank you, Jesus, for everything? So you know what I did? I said, uh, Pastor, I want to take Jesus with me also, how you did the same way. Then you, he held my both hands and we both prayed. And our prayer was very simple. We prayed, Jesus, please come with me also, how you are with this pastor. And you know, I took Jesus, went for a convention. That day there was visible major miracles. A layman got healing and a deaf man, a deaf man started listening. And I was so happy because I only imagined that Jesus is with me. But in reality, I could see the visible miracles. And you know what happened? After three days of my convention, I left uh, Karnataka and com coming back to Kerala. On the way back to Kerala, uh, I was sitting in Mangalore railway station. After a few minutes, I saw one of my friends. Hey, Bala! Where are you from? And you know, I began to speak to my friend. Forgot Jesus. I got in train. Came to Chalakudi. Then only I remember. Oh, I took my Jesus from his house. But I forgot him in railway station. That was a Mangalore railway station. And I called my friend saying, Pastor, this is what happened. I took Jesus from your house. But on the way, I lost him. Uh, what can I do? I asked Jesus what to do. And I asked my friend, what to do? I lost Jesus there. Then friend said, you go back to Mangalore railway station and say sorry to Jesus and take him again. So, you know, with my mind, I closed my eye and in my mind, I went to railway station. I saw Jesus sitting under that badam tree where I lost him. I said, sorry, Jesus, please come with me. I took Jesus and came back again. Then, you know, uh, I began to enjoy my Jesus wherever I go. I used to take him and I used to speak to him. And after a week, one of my friend, a priest called Father Savior Arul Raj, he's from Tutukudi, he called me saying that, brother, please come to Tutukudi for a convention. I said, Father, how can I come? You are calling night and I cannot reach. He said, 10 o'clock there is a bus from Cochin, Kesatisi Depot. So I went to Cochin to catch a bus to Tutukudi. You know what happened? When I got into bus, bus was fully packed. And last there was a seat for six people and there was one seat empty at the right side. I was so happy I got, but when I sat in that seat, I felt very sad because last seat, no pushback, it's not an airbus, no AC, and full of crowd and whole night journey. Tomorrow I have three, four sections. So feeling very sad, I don't know what to do. Suddenly I remember about uh, how to take Jesus. You know what I did? I closed my eyes and said, Jesus, please come with me in this bus. You sit in this seat, I will sit in your lap and we will go together. If there is any gutter, you be my shock up, sir. You know, I spoke to Jesus very happily and suddenly a kind of warm feeling for my chest and I could not control that pain. It was burning my heart, you know, and I was so, so taken up and I don't know what to do. So I stood from there and went in front. After a few minutes, I became all right and I came back and sat in the same seat. Again, the same warm feeling, I could not control myself, so I stood and went again. And then the conductor called me saying, hey, that's not your seat, don't sit there, you come and sit, otherwise finally you won't get any seat. When he was keep on talking, the bus jumped in front. Everybody fell down, even I fell down. When I looked back, from behind one another bus came and made accident with our bus. And all those who were sitting at the last seat died on the spot. One minute before, I was one man and especially I was the last right hand side and the person who is in front of me also died. My question, today if I am alive to speak to you, I believe that day I have taken Jesus to that bus. You know my brothers and sisters, when you are listening I want to tell you, please take Jesus wherever you go. Tonight you try to sleep in his lap. When you are getting up you say, good morning. 
when you get a tea or coffee, rice, whatever you say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For everything you say, thanks. And if you can fall in love with Jesus like this, you are obeying the biggest commandment. Love your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. You know, my brothers, once when we read John chapter 21, 16, 17 and all, we read a lovely paragraph in Bible. Jesus asked Peter, do you love me more than everyone? When I sit in this boat, I remember Peter and the Galilee, you know, it's lovely. Jesus is asking, do you love me more than any of this? And you know what was his answer? Yes, Lord, I love you. Jesus was not satisfied. Again, he's asking, do you love me? Jesus did not ask, do you believe me? Do you worship me? Do you adore me? I'm not saying that you don't worship, you don't believe, you don't, you do. But the question from Jesus is, do you love? So let us take a decision to fall in love with Jesus. Till date, we used to tell Jesus, Jesus, I thank you, I worship you, I adore you, I, you know, etc. But from today on, we are going to say, Jesus, I love you, I love you, I love you. I'm going to sing a small song and you can just listen and imitate. Jesus, 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 I love you, love you, love you. With all my heart, with all my mind, with all my strength, I love you. Once again, Jesus, 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 I love you, love you, love you. With all my heart, with all my mind, with all my strength, I love you. Once again, Jesus, 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 I love you, love you, love you. With all my heart, with all my mind, with all my strength, I love you. Dear friends, I'm going to pray for you. May the Almighty God, Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit bless you abundantly. Let Him purify you by His Holy Blood and let Him fill you with His Word, with His love. And let Him teach you to love Him more than anything and everything on earth. May Almighty God bless you abundantly.